G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series, and uh, I'm just doing a little bit of work on the Series 3. And, you know, I'm just doing up nuts and bolts and all the rest. And obviously, th certain thoughts uh, go through your mind when you're doing sort of, not monotonous, but, you know, work that's relatively simple and everything's going according to plan, which only happens some of the time here. And I thought, What's one of the best things you could take out bush with you or on a remote trip? And for some reason, I don't know why, my mind went to jam tarts, custard tarts, porridge, cracked pepper, eggs, and soap. Perplexing, isn't it? But what do all these things have in common? Well, they're what I call fix-it food. That's right. And your turmeric and your kale lattes and all the rest just can't do what these can do. So if you want to learn more about how you can take some fixin' food on your next trip, then you know what to do. Click on that subscribe button down below, notification button too, and most importantly, stay tuned. I don't know about you, but I don't know what the rich people in the world are doing. An evening in the shed, nothing better, nothing better. And obviously I've had to get a little bit of a fermented beverage, um, obviously just to uh, make the golden wisdom come out a little bit easier. So I do apologise, it is not in fact a, a, a cup of tea, but it is actually a bottled cold cappuccino. And some, some of you may disagree with that. But if you look very closely, it's got froth on top, doesn't it? Yeah, it's frothing. So it's got to be a cold cappuccino. There you go. Already learning stuff, eh? Fix some food. Mmm. Just at the right temperature. Which, for those of you in England, is actually below room temperature. But anyway, we won't get on to the... Uh, degradation of beer in the colonies. We'll move on to these fixin' foods. So basically I have nothing against turmeric and uh, kale. I like a good bit of spinach as anyone else and yes that is a bad dad joke. Um, but frankly they're pretty useless in regards to fixing your vehicle. So um, we're not going to talk about it here. So if you want to learn more about turmeric and kale um, proceed on to another video. But anyway, um, what I thought I'd talk about is just some food and some uh, condiments that you can take with you that are in fact very, very useful in keeping your vehicle going. Now, obviously a good stomach full of food uh, boosts one's morale, keeps one moving forward, and that ensures that you have the energy to fix the vehicle and therefore keep the expedition moving forward. Um, you know, as they say, an army that can't bite is an army that can't fight, and it's very true. But also, sometimes you just don't have the thing to fix the thing, and this is uh, very much the case. Now, we've covered um, numerous little, I guess, uh, fiascos here on this channel over the years. And for those of you who haven't seen, we've, we've done videos on um, putting eggs in radiators and uh, caged eggs work better than, uh, or battery raised eggs, because uh, the free range ones are bigger and they tend to range freely over the side of the radiator and go elsewhere, which isn't what you want. And, uh, and then obviously cracked pepper. And uh, we, we cheat, we don't actually take a pepper mill with us, we actually get the pre-cracked pepper with us so it doesn't have as much bite but anyway we've we've talked about that and and obviously you know how you can use it to fix a radiator and for those of you who don't know it's very very simple a radiator is really no different to a kettle uh, it ends up becoming a pressure vessel and basically we all know how hard egg is to get off a fry pan when it's been absolutely burnt to cinders 
and uh, cracked pepper is really no different. So all it basically does is it finds where the crack is, goes to that point because it's in a solution in the actual uh, radiator itself, or even if you've got a head gasket issue, goes through the water jacket of the motor, gets to that point where it's escaping, sets, cements, works like a charm. So that's pretty pretty simple. Um, I've heard people putting salt in, but salt equals rust. Um, mind you, if you've got a blown head gasket and oil's going in the water, that doesn't really matter, I guess. But anyway, um, so yeah, so that's that's certainly two fixum foods I would certainly recommend. Now another one is porridge. Now porridge or oats in their uh, uh, raw form are absolutely fantastic but the best thing you can get is instant porridge now instant porridge is um, a powdered variety and this is really good because it obviously because it's finer when you put it in water it's got a greater surface area than round oats and therefore when you're wanting to you know get your porridge done quickly it works very effectively and this is another one that's fantastic once again bunging in the radiator so that can that can get you out of trouble so and you know um, oats are a great energy source too for for the individual uh, so you know that's that's another one another fix some food for you mmm now they're all rather bland what happens if you're a bit of a sweet tooth now I've had people comment on the cooking videos that we've done in the past and the comments have been fair um, who does cooking videos and forgets half the ingredients oh I do but anyway that's fine um, but also people have said geez some of the stuff you do is a little bit um, carb heavy it's a little bit a uh, little bit sweet some of it and it's pretty simple you know if you are out in the middle of nowhere in extreme heat or extreme cold and your Land Rover is getting bogged all the time or it's getting stuck or you're having to fix it all the time you actually burn through a lot more energy than you'd realize uh, when I did the canning stock route uh, shocking as it seems I, I must have lost at least 10 kilos uh, in doing that and uh, yeah so don't go on Jenny Craig just go on a Land Rover trip but basically what I'm getting at is it's not the end of the world and having a few sweets along the way isn't a bad thing because if you feel guilty about it just go get your Land Rover stuck on a sand dune and spend uh, spend you know half a day digging it out you'll burn it off pretty quick but anyway what I'm getting at in a roundabout way as I usually do is tarts are very good and I'm talking about the pastry variety with a little bit of jam in there or if you want to really shine people on a bit of custard getting a few of them and actually chucking them in the icebox esky fridge whatever is definitely the way to go now many of you are probably thinking where is this going pretty simple in your mouth so you basically you just get the tart you eat the tart but the great thing about tarts is is they come in a uh, we call it aluminium uh, foil like little dish and what you do is you keep that don't throw it away you keep it in the front of the car why well if you're out in the middle of nowhere and your car's stopped the fuse is blown or the relay's stuffed what are you gonna do there's no fencing wire around which is a bit of a dodgy way of doing it what are you gonna do Oh, I've got alloy foil or aluminium foil because I've just had a juicy, juicy jam tart. Fantastic. And then what you do is you just rip a little strip off and depending on how many amps you want it, you just twist a little bit more, thicken it up, arc it out between the two points in your fuse box, Bob's your uncle, off you go. And if you've got something, even on your more modern Fandango vehicles, that something's tripping something out and there's a bit of electricery going on, um, you can do the same. You can just simply short out the 
circuits that you require, hey presto, you're done. A friend of mine, actually, long story, so I'll cut it very short, saw an individual actually fix a TD5, right, a TD5, which, you know, don't exactly have a great reputation because they get these three amigos popping up. He actually watched this guy short out the particular circuits and don't ask me how doing exactly that using just alfoil aluminium foil and they went away and the car ran fine so there's a lot to be said by taking a few jam tarts with you out bush so that's that's something well worth um yeah well worth thinking about now there's a couple of other things mm. inspiration's flowing now, flour is a fantastic one. I think flour and potatoes. If you've got flour and potatoes, there's really not much you can't do. Potatoes for fixing your vehicle, well, maybe not. They're not that useful. Deb, obviously, or dehydrated potato, there's pretty much not, pretty much anything that couldn't fix. Um, you know, if there was a dam that had a leak in it, you just put Deb in it and fix it, you know. Um, if the dikes in um, Holland, and I'm talking about the uh, seawalls, uh, obviously got a leak, you just put a heap of Deb on it and be cool. So Deb's a fantastic one. You can fix all manner of things with it. But the other thing that you can actually do is obviously with flour, if you mix it with water, it becomes very, very hard also. So it acts as a great patching agent. But one of the other great ways of actually creating a patch, and one thing that I always take with me, is just a simple bar of soap. Now, a bar of soap for many of us, not all of us, but most parts of the world, it's relatively cheap. And by using just a bar of soap and using a knife, you can actually scrape off some flakes, mix it with a bit of dirt or sand, a little bit of water and you make it into a paste consistency. Now if you've got a fuel tank that actually has a crack in it or it's been dinged or whatever you can actually fill that over the crack and no joke it actually works it actually does the trick. Um, I've used it in the past and you know it's it's not something that you're going to put on there and leave it there for 12 months but if it's enough to get you up the track a little bit further to somewhere where you can get a proper repair done, then that's, that's really all that matters. Another one that's always good to take with you is jam. Now, if you think about it, if your car you know, breaks down, it's a horrible term to use because um, it's a defeatist term. If your car breaks down, then if you've got potatoes, you've got flour, you've got jam, you're not doing too bad. You can go set a trap up or a snare. Then you can actually um, get a little bit of protein or meat or maybe you can make a fishing rod or whatever. You're going to be living pretty, pretty comfortably. But the great thing about taking jam with you is you can actually use it on your engine also. Now, if you've got a cylinder... Um, cylinder head issue you can actually take the cylinder head off and provided you've got a nice big tin of jam which you can still get or a number of jars of jam I always take a couple because it's nice to have a bit of variety um, you can actually make a head gasket out of it no joke you can actually use that take your old head gasket off if you've got it um, if you've got a couple issues between the cylinders you can just ply the jam in there nice and thick pop it on torque it up give it a little while to settle I'd probably run the engine without any water in it which I know sounds a bit wrong but you can do for a little while just to get a bit of warmth in it and because there's so much sugar in jam it solidifies and goes rock hard and you've got your head gasket all fixed so, and the other advantage with that, getting back to the egg, the porridge and all the rest, when it comes back to rebuilding the engine, unlike the other radiator solvents and all the rest and the potions that are out there, you can actually get all this out really easy. By putting just a bit of dishwashing liquid 
and that's another good one to take with you in your radiator if it's overheating just put a bit of dishwashing liquid in there or um, powder laundry powder in there too or if you I don't know people have coffee machines in their cars these days they probably got a a washing machine to put your or dishwasher to put your plates in if you've got those tablets chuck those in the radiator too and basically that'll just dissolve everything it will dissolve all the muck in the radiator too and uh, you're back to square one replace that cylinder head fix that cracked water jacket radiator whatever and off you go so basically I guess the purpose of this video is is that it's what's up here that really counts. It's the knowledge that you have at hand. Um, you know, there's simple solutions to complicated problems throughout the world. You've just got to be willing to think a little bit outside the box, give it a go, make a mistake, fail, and then try again. And that's basically all I've done over the years. And particularly what I do is I read a lot of books of people who, you know, did this, you know, not in the 70s, but back in, you know, the 1920s and all the rest. Drovers, stockmans, explorers back in the 1800s and all the rest who didn't have all these fancy gizmos and gadgets. Um, and they were able to go to more remote places than I'll ever go. So, you know, just, just a little bit of food for thought there anyway. But anyway, I hope you just enjoyed this sort of random video or random thought that just popped into my head. Um, but yeah, anyway, hopefully it's been of benefit to you. So anyway, if you're enjoying the content here at Seriously Series, I very much encourage you to click on that subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too. It does make a big difference to the channel. And if you've been watching our videos for quite a while, um, please do click on the Patreon icon and please do check us out there. Um, you know, all proceeds go to the, the trips, the, um, the re restoration of these vehicles and all the rest. And obviously the more support we get, the more content we can bring your way. But uh, thank you very much and I hope to see you in our next video. Cheers.